In amateur radio, there's nothing more exciting than calling CQ on your transmitter, than waiting patiently while your signal propagates across the earth. Then off in the distance, you hear a faint response from a fellow ham in their ham shack, wearing nothing but sweat and tidy whities They respond to your signal with a 5-9. You exchange some meaningless information, talk about the weather, and prostate health. Now, if you want to do this more often and better, you could take advantage of something called a ground plane. And that's what this video is all about. Trust PCB Way for any fabrication service needs that you have for your next project. PCBWay.com does way more than just PCB prototyping. They have PCB assembly services, rigid flex PCB services, CNC machining, and 3D printing. Stay up to date with PCBWay.com's blog, where you can get information about different services that are available for you, and you can even take training courses via their online video selections. So here's a picture of a vertical antenna that I was testing that I posted on my YouTube community tab. And I asked for comments on my janky ground plane that I had installed here. The red arrows pointing to it if you need a clue. Anyhow, I got a lot of positive comments and I got some comments that weren't so positive. And I even got one comment where somebody said, you big old dummy, that's not a ground plane. The actual ground is the ground plane. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So I decided it was time to make a video and explain this to everybody for once and for all. So you may be asking yourself, what is a ground plane? And I put some language together here to make it nice and easy. So when using vertical antennas in ham radio, and oh, by the way, this video is going to be about vertical antennas, we typically refer to the ground plane as conductive elements, such as radials or a metallic surface positioned horizontally around the base of the antenna. These ground planes enhance our antenna's performance by providing a counterpoise and improving radiation efficiency. And we're going to talk a little bit about exactly how it does that. Because I don't want you just to believe me, what we're going to do is commit an act of logical fallacy. In particular, we're going to appeal to authority. So that way you don't have to believe me, you can believe the experts at the American Radio Relay League. Here I've got a copy of the 2022 Handbook Volume 4. So here, at section 21.3, vertical ground plane antennas, it says one of the more popular amateur HF antennas is the vertical. It usually refers to a single radiating element erected vertically over a ground plane of radial wires. And then it says that a typical vertical is an electrical half wave long and is constructed of wire or tubing. The vertical antenna is more accurately named the ground plane because of the conductive surface, the ground plane, creates a path for return currents to the feed point, effectively creating the missing half of a half wave antenna. Another name for this type of antenna is the monopole, or sometimes called the unipole. And then it says down here that a ground plane can be a solid conductive surface, such as a vehicle body at UHF and VHF, and I read that backwards. At HF, this is impractical, and systems of ground radials are used. These are wires laid out on the ground, radiating from the base of the antenna. So, there's your proof. So, what does a ground plane do? The ground plane helps shape the radiation pattern of the antenna, and we'll take a look at some far field plots that show us this. It influences the angle at which the radio waves are emitted or received, affecting the antenna's performance. The ground plane acts as a counterpoise for the vertical element of the antenna. In simple terms, it provides the missing half of the antenna in the vertical monopole setup. And I think we just covered that. The counterpoise acts as a capacitive energy store to push and pull alternating currents in the antenna. And so we're going to deviate from the slide a little bit. A lot of times people say, well, what's the difference between a counterpoise and a ground? And why can't I just use the ground on my coaxial cable that's going to go back to my station ground? A counterpoise is not a ground because the current never goes to earth. So in a ground, the current goes to earth where it is absorbed by the earth and lost. And I know people say the power is never lost, but it's absorbed into the earth and radiated as heat. And that essentially means lost. A ground plane plays a role in matching the impedance of the antenna system. So by putting a ground plane on and adjusting the layout and the length of this ground plane, you can adjust your impedance. Proper impedance mashing is essential for efficient power transfer between the antenna and the transmission line. 
So you want your antenna to be matched as close as possible to your coaxial cable. That way you get an effective power transfer into your antenna and then your uh, energy is then either absorbed in the antenna as ohmic resistance or it is radiated out into the atmosphere. I don't want to get into all the arguments about SWR. I have a whole bunch of videos talking about SWR and what exactly happens to power on the transmission line. And if you're interested, you can check those out. So by providing a conductive surface, the ground plane helps reduce losses that may occur due to the resistive nature of Earth. This is particularly important for low frequency antennas. All right, so I used a tool called MMANAGAL, Mamanagal, I think is how we say that. And what it what I did is I did a far field plot of a quarter wave vertical antenna on 20 meters. And then I started with zero radials. Then I went to four, eight, 16, and 32. And each one of those configurations is represented by the lobes on the bottom part of the screen. So think of this far field plot if you're standing in a field away from your antenna and you can see how the uh, RF is radiating from your antenna. And then you can see with each successive increase of radials, I have a more robust and better ground plane and I get more gain. And I guess we get somewhere around 5 dB of gain by going from 0 to 32 radials. That's pretty good. It's about an S unit. And I would suggest you do this and you would uh, get better contacts. DX further and you'd have a lot more contacts in the log and potentially even get paper awards that you can hang on your wall. But anyhow, when you get to about 32 radials, the increases that we see here become less and less dramatic. And so that's called the law of diminishing returns, where extra effort yields lower results. So I really wouldn't go past 32, but hey, it's your money and it's your wire. Put as many as you want. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how ground planes work. And so radio waves from the vertical antenna, they interact with the ground. The ground plane will reflect a portion of these waves, and what that does is it strengthens the radiation pattern while minimizing losses in the ground. So because Earth in most places, and that's anywhere but near saltwater essentially, is not a good conductor, when electrical energy or RF energy hits that ground, it quickly becomes absorbed. By using this ground plane, we can reflect that. So the ground plane beneath the antenna acts as reflecting surface. The ground plane will generate what is called an image current. And this is a reverse image of your antenna. Image currents create a mirror image of the antenna's current distribution in the ground, leading to cancellation of some of the ground losses and improving the radiation pattern. And what it does is that those currents create electromagnetic fields just like your element does. And they help push up some of the energy that is being directed towards the ground and allows you to take advantage of that. So that takes us back to our antenna and whether or not this is a janky ground plane. Well, one, it's only got four radials on there and I could put more and it could be a little bit better. Also notice these are not directly underneath of the antenna, but they're slightly offset by the bob clamp that I used to clamp this ground plane to my ground spike. But it really didn't matter that much. What I would say is that if you're using a vertical antenna, go and put a ground plane on there, see how it behaves, and adjust it as necessary. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. It's greatly appreciated.